to my channel. Just coming to talk to you guys about another episode of Love & Hip Hop Family Reunion. Uh, this episode was giving us real, you know, meh. You know, nothing too much happened. Um, really, honestly, to me, this was a filler episode because when I saw the preview for next week, you know, some sh really is popping off next week. So, you know, we just gonna talk about what happened this episode. Honestly, you guys, drop down in the comments and tell me how you're feeling about Love & Hip Hop. Do you feel like Love & Hip Hop how many seasons do you think they got left in them? Do you kind of feel like this is them, you know, realizing, you know, here we go to the end of the road. Is it the end of the road of love and hip hop? Is it the end of the road for love and hip hop? And if it is, what's next? What is next for reality TV? That is a good question. I got a question. <laughs> shout out to shout out to Wanda J. Blige. I got a question. Uh, but yeah, love and hip hop, you guys. Not too much happened, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, if you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Everybody else, drop down in the comments. Like I said, tell me how you feel about love and hip hop. Uh, and going forward, do you feel like Erica was on some ooh na na bullshit? You know, not trying to apologize to sin because it looked like it to me. Um, but yeah, so we open up the episode with, um, Mimi talking to Jonathan and Sin Santana. You know, Sin, the way she talks, you know, Booby, you know, Booby, he just really nice, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, so Mimi's talking to Jonathan, basically trying to talk him off the ledge of, you know, I want to go home. You know, I just really can't believe, you know, Erica tried to take that one sentence and spin it. So basically Jonathan you know, came back at Zell after he tried to do the, oh, you too gay for me shit. And he was like, wait a minute, bro. He was like, I'm too gay. He's like, how would you feel if somebody, you know, said to you, well, you're too black. You know, he was trying to make, you know, an analogy, you know, for some people who are, you know, a little, a little bit smart. They would kind of realize, um, you know, what he was trying to get at there. Um, and so, um... First of all, Zell too, the you're too gay for me shit is quite ironic because at the end of the day, no matter how you appear to the public, bitch, you still get fucked in the ass or you still, you know, doing somebody else's booty hole in. So y'all both like dick, regardless of how y'all look on the outside, y'all both either taking a giving it, period. So Zell, you might want to fix that little, you know, inner hatred that's going on, um, you know. Go talk to Iyamla. You might want to get that that situated and figure it out. But Jonathan, you know, has said that comment. Erica come in and call herself, I don't know, saying something. When she looked at Jonathan was like, because we too, we too black for you, remember? We too black for you, remember? And it was like, bitch, what the fuck? Hold on, you, who, who is we? Like, we French now? We, we, we too black for you? See, this is what's so funny about people who are in the Latin community that try to pull that Evan Lozada bullshit where it's like, oh, I'm Latin and then some shit pops off and it's like, oh, I've always been Afro-Latina. I've always been Afro-Latina, bitch. You ain't never claimed the Afro side of your uh, existence because, you know, you black like this, not like this. Like, <laughs> or you Latin like this, not like this. Like, bitch, shout out to fucking Daniva. Like... They really love kind of towing that line. But Erica Mena, bitch, you need to fix that little statement talking about, oh, we too black for you, remember? You definitely were trying to pick something out and then, like, stick to it, flip it, change it, rearrange it to fit how you felt at the moment. And you could probably see, like, that's honestly, that's how Erica has operated in her whole life. And I'm sure she does the shit with Safari. Um, They both do that shit with each other because they're very much immature. But nonetheless... Mimi tells Jonathan, like, you know, forget that. People love you. You need to stay here. Sin's like, well, shoot, if my homie's out, bitch, we out together. Okay? You know, because that's what best friends do. You, bitch, you leave. I, look, I'm running behind you. Um, so they, you know, the night ends and she's just like, you know, talk to Erica. Then, you know, just talk to Erica tomorrow or are you ready to talk? All that type of stuff. So it's the next day and um, it is Safari's day and Safari actually goes to the gym with Jules Santana just to basically talk about what happened the night before and, you know, him having a relationship with Erica. You know, they always told this like, oh, we're good. They love the fucking infighting of it all. Like, they're very toxic. Um, but he basically asked you us, like, you know, I see your relationship with Kim Bella. You know, they've been together for a long time and it's just really hilarious, like, 
the the relationships that people see and think like, oh, I'm going to go get advice from them. Because Joel Santana and Camilla, and Camilla have been in this, you know, kind of long-standing relationship. Now they're the ones that's going to get, you know, give advice to people. Like, we know their history relationship. This is really, this is really who we're getting advice from. Like, yikes. Um, but Safari, you know, he asked and Joel's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's about, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you love each other. You know, his big ass teeth, you know, you know, you love each other. And, um, you know, if he, he like, he barely opens his mouth. You know what I'm saying? You know? Um, you know, you love each other and, you know, you're just going to work it out. And then, so Safari's like talking about the whole Eric Kamen going, you know, gay with Amina Butterfly at the sex charades party. And he was like, you know, okay, I told Safari, uh, uh, Eric Kamen, you know, bring her on up and whatever happens, happens. And I guess it didn't happen and he low-key got salty about it. Now he want to try to flip the script and be like, well... I don't get what the double standard is because, you know, if, you know, it don't matter that she's kissing a girl. If it was me, you know, everybody be mad. Get it. Totally understand with that point of view that you're taking just because, you know, it's a woman kissing a woman. If that's a boundary or a rule that you have set for, um, you know, your relationship. Cool. But let's not sit there and act like you weren't gung-ho about it because you were thinking about the chance that it could have turned into a menage a trois and then the minute that it didn't and your dick got hard and there was nothing you know to alleviate it now you want to get mad and talk about oh it's a double standard nigga you, you wasn't that upset because you watched the shit and in the back of your mind you was doing real stevie J. You know, thinking with the rat face, thinking you about to, you know, have two bitches in the bed. You know, real, you know, real, real, real men, bitch. Just real man. Um, so speaking of that, you know, it's Safari's day. It's Jamaican, you know, he's Jamaican streets. You know, he's taking everybody to the, to the, to the Jamaican streets. Um, uh, no, oh, I skipped a part where they were talking. So, Sin, Jonathan, Peter, Rich Dollars, and Mimi were at the table, and Sin was filling them in on, you know, Cisco. Uh, because Cisco had talked to Mimi about, um, I mean, Sin had talked to Mimi about, you know, Cisco coming up to her and how, how it was just totally the wrong time, and, you know, something's going on with him. He's acting real hella weird. And so, Sin, oh, Booby's at the table too. So, Sin was telling them, like, you know, Yo, boy, Cisco, what is going on with him? You know, I was talking to him and, you know, you know, he came up to me and he was just talking about like, Sin, why are you doing this to me? And I was like, what? And he was, he was like, why are you doing this to me? You know, with Booby. And she was like, with Booby? And Booby was looking like, what the fuck I got to do with anything? She, she was like, yeah, you know, Booby, you rubbing him all in my face with, you know, what old dude. And so Booby's like, this what the fuck y'all do? And P both Peter and Rich Dobbs is like, uh-uh, mm-mm, that ain't us. So, Cisco is really slow. Like, he really was looking at Sin and thinking that she was with Booby rubbing it in his face. Cisco, you're not that important. Like, I think you can tell Cisco is on a downward spiral in his life and he's not trying to catch himself. He refuses to go get help and he's definitely one of those men who's on the way down and if you get in a relationship with him, he gonna take your ass down with him. Period. So, um, she was like, yeah, he was just really weird. You know, when I, you know, when I told, you know, when I told him about what he did, that really hurt me. You know, I was doing a song about my brother and he was, you know, he tried to tell me, you know, sin, I love you. And I, you know, I was telling him, you know, Cisco, no, you know, I just want to keep it strictly pro professional. You know, I don't really want to do this, Cisco. And... He got mad and jacked the song back. And of course, on some typical creep squad, creep squad shit, I'm going to trade the song or the access or the, you know, the connections to hopefully get that, you know, p -E, that that coochie, that box, okay? The cookie jar. That's what a lot of you niggas was doing, the creep squad, especially Rich Dollars and his old nasty ass. Um, and so Peter and Rich was just like, yeah, we just going to have to talk to homeboy because he... He going through it. He acting weird. I, I, you know, I, I, we just gonna have to help our brother out. 
So then Jonathan was like, well, you know, y'all can figure that shit out because I'm thinking that I'm leaving. And they're like, why? You know, he's like, you know, um, Erica really tried to flip the switch and, you know, call me a racist. Like, you, like, I have never been called that in my life. You know, this is what I stand for. You know, not only am I, you know, Latin, but I'm gay. So, like, I have a double negative, you know, in, re in regards to me. Basically, Peter, Rich Dodds, all of them was like, man, if that, like, we know you're not a racist. We love you. Like, fuck all the bullshit, you know, stay here for the family. So that's kind of what they were talking about. Um, then we, you know, get to Safari's, uh, you know, Heritage Day, basically. He had the flag, of course. Everybody was just kind of celebrating, which they had that Jamaican food. My mom is Jamaican. She was born in Kingston. So she make a bomb ass jerk chicken, y'all. Mm, it's just so, mm, so good. It's, it's like sweet, spicy. Then she, oh, y'all. Who I'm going to have my mom make some jerk chicken. Um, Yeah, I really want to go back to Jamaica. And I really low-key want to do a 23 and Me because my mom's from Jamaica. Uh, she moved to New York. You know how most, you know, people from Jamaica do. Um, And I just want to know my heritage more. You know, my name uh, is, um, um, like, apparently from, like, my grandma, who was, like, a queen in Jamaica. So, you know, I'm, your girl, my, she, she might be a princess somewhere, okay? I need to figure that shit out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, it's Jamaican Day. They flying kites, eating food. Shekinah over there talking. Now, y'all need to figure out what the hell's going on. Because now you want to be mad, and I just can't keep up. Now you mad, then you want to be in love with him. You know, bitch, I'm getting whiplash. Then you want to be mad at her. Like, what the fuck is it going on? And everybody's looking at Shekinah like, girl, like, can you... Bring it down. She kind of just kills me with her laugh. Like, I love, I have a love-hate relationship with Shekinah. I really do. Because you can always count on Shekinah to, like, cut the bullshit, get straight to it, and ask the questions. But then also, on the same time, it feels like, bitch, like, girl, you worry about the wrong thing. This ain't even getting none of your business. It ain't none of your business. It ain't none of your business. Um, but yeah, so she talking. Here come Bobby. She said, what's your pink ass on? Because he had all this pink. Erica comes up and they kind of like start fighting, but play fighting. Like, girl, you know, you just talk too much. You worry about the wrong guy thing. thing. You know, shut your wicked, uh, wicked witch ass of the north up. Like, you know, from New York, you know, with your little bright yellow stuff coming down here. You know, just fucking shit up, Erica. You need to figure out what's going on with you on Safari. And so, Brooke was like, maybe, maybe she kind of just needs some dick. Okay, maybe she just needs some D. Somebody give us some company and maybe she'll stop acting like that. Mm, Brooke. It might help alleviate it, like, this much. <laughs> like, but that's it. That's the kind of joke. Period. Um, so, as that's going on, um, Peter and Rich Dollars see Cisco basically sulking. Cisco has been sulking since he got here. Um, and with him, you know, like Rich Dollars says, he's like, I've known him 20 years. And, like... Every time you ask him what's wrong, it always changes. Now he wants to, you know, say, oh, the reason he has a problem with, you know, Rich Dollars and Peters is because, you know, they get to see their kids. And it's like, no, bro, you've had a problem with them before you stopped seeing your kids six months ago. Nigga, you got issues that date, you know, like way back, way back. So, um, Rich Dollars sees him just, you know, kind of walking around and he's like, he's saucy. You know, I can see them. He's saucy. He damn knocked the cup at the cup out of his hand. And he's like, bro, what you do that for? Because he's like, stop it. Stop it. And he's like, I don't know what's going on. He's like, exactly. That's the problem. He's like, you know what you did last night? And basically, Cisco was drunk, lit, and was trying to, you know, address the stuff with sin. But, you know, how can you address the stuff when you, you know, you, you high and drunk, you know? Um, okay, go away, alarm. I'm in the middle of something. Um, and so he's looking at him like, bro, you got to stop. Do you remember what you said to sin with the booby shit? And he was like, man, you know, I really need to talk to her. I, I like, I really need to figure the shit out. Um, he was like, yeah, he's like, man, you know, Richard was just a bad day. He's like, well, how many bad days you going to have? And I really find it quite ironic that Rich Dollars is becoming the voice of reason for Cisco. Obviously, as we know, Rich Dollars past in history, like, it always, it's just ironic how, like, the bad, messed up niggas be the one who, like, talk to the worst er off niggas. Like, <laughs> it's like the irony of it all. But because, you know, Rich Dollars has that close connection with Cisco, I can get why he's the one because he knows him.
the closest. Like, who else is going to check you but the people who know you the best? Cisco is on a downward spiral, and he needs help fast. Because you can tell, like, it's just a lot of shit going on with him. Um, and everybody said the best. Just weird. Just, just weird. Um, so they fly the kite. Um, and they, on the bus, there was this moment too, where they were doing like the apology, you know, tour or whatever. Erica apologized to Kim Bella. She's like, the only apology I have, you know, I want to apologize to Kim Bella, you know, 20 years ago when we got into that huge fight, you know, I just allowed people, you know, to give me mis you know, information and I just ran with this. So, you know, I just really want to apologize for that. And Kim Bella, of course, with her big old lying back shoulder, big booty ass, Y'all, I don't understand. Like, y'all gotta stop getting these big-ass booties. When you turn 50, 60, who's gonna be carrying all this down? Girl, when you start getting osteoporosis and your, jo and your joints start hurting, what you gonna do with all that ass, Cambella? The shit don't look comfortable. It looked like it hurt. But nonetheless, she walk over there. And, you know, basically accepts the apology. But everybody else, including Shekana, was like, bitch, okay, you apologize to Kim Bella, but where's your apology to sin? <laughs> um, Erica is going to refuse to apologize to sin. It's not happening. Like, it really is not happening. So, of course, you know, Jonathan, he basically decides, you know, I at least need to, you know, see Stevie J because I'm the one who invited him. Stevie J makes it there. Everybody pulls up to the pool, you know, says hi to Stevie J, Erica, Minna, and Stevie J. Last time they saw each other, they was going at each other's necks at the reunion. But because that was so long ago, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, wash it, we're done. Um, and Stevie J, he was like, he's like, oh, you know, I'm a little hurt that Mimi didn't tell me that, you know, this was going on. You know, Jonathan had to be the one to tell me. Bruh. You've done some fucked up shit to Mimi. I'm pretty sure she wants to limit her line of communication with you, period. Okay? So, um, you know, he sits down. Everybody's at the pool. Bobby with his big old bubble booty. You know he got that shit done. You know he got... Bobby is plumped, injected, pushed, and pulled. <laughs> he just plumped up everywhere. Everywhere. Um, but Stevie J, he, he sitting with everybody at the pool and he was like, you know, I just love what y'all are doing, you know, just kind of talking to everybody. And, you know, he of course is talking about how he going through all the shit with Faith Devin. He's like, you see who filed for divorce? Stevie? Stevie. Whether you file for divorce or not. <laughs> Whether you are the one who filed a Faith. Nigga, we got the updates. Since all that shit has happened, you trying to file for spousal support, and then now we hear your lawyer dropped you? The fact that your lawyer dropped you, Stevie, says enough. Um, But do you, boo-boo, you want to try and, you know, pump your chest up with this one? But we know the real you. You know, Mr. Nice Guy. So, speaking of Mr. Wannabe Nice Guy, he calls himself apologizing to Mimi. You know, Mimi, you know, I've just done so much to you in the past. And, you know, I, I, I just was real disrespectful. And, you know, that's just not who I want to be. You know, I, I don't want to be that man. Um, You know, I just really apologize. And Mimi's face the whole time, before she even said in her confession, I said, Mimi don't give a damn about this apology. <laughs> Look at Mimi's face. She was just like... And literally, as I was thinking it in her confession, she goes, I don't heard plenty of apologies from Stevie J. It's not the apology I want. I want the action. Where is the follow through, nigga? You men apologize all the damn time. We don't want the apology. We want the changed action. Where is the change in the behavior? You Tristan Thompson, Stevie J ass niggas. <laughs> Just stay apologizing to continue doing the same bull. So that's what Mimi feels like. And especially for her daughter, that's why she's real salty with you. If you say you're going to do something, do it. If you say you're going to be there, be there. If you say you're going to show up, show the fuck up. Stevie, that's why your daughter and Savannah out here wilding right now. Why y'all got freaking, you know, headbutt on grown up hip hop. They don't respect you. 
like Stevie J, get your shit together. And I don't feel no types of way about Mimi, you know, giving him, you know, the cold shoulder. <laughs> Bitch, you get my back, period. Um, so she kind of basically lets everybody know they're going to do like a cleansing ceremony that night. And, you know, just kind of get some things off the chest. So everybody comes, it's around the fire. And they basically just say everything they, you know, want to, you know, get off their chest. And, um, um, uh, Zell ends up apologizing to Mimi because Zell started out as Mimi's, like, stylist or whatever. And he basically said, you know, once he started getting, you know, more, uh, you know, just more notoriety, hanging out with more people, doing more people's hair, they kind of got into it and he felt bad about that and he misses their friendship. So they hug it out, kumbaya. Um, Shekinah basically apologizes to everybody. She's like, I was talking shit about you. I was talking shit about you. I don't apologize to you just about all the shit that was in my head that I was saying. You know, Cisco, I don't really fuck with you and how you did that shit to Sin. How you gonna take that song from Sin? And Cisco, like, that ain't what happened. She was like, oh, really, Cisco? Then what happened, Cisco? How did it happen then, Cisco? <laughs> That's what Sin wanted to know. And Sin did not, and Cisco did not want to put that shit out there. Because how did it happen, Cisco? Right. That's what we thought. Um, so that was a real dead end. Um, uh, she kind of apologized to Peter because she was like, bro, Peter, I was going in on you because I didn't like the way he was playing these females on TV. And Peter, you deserve every piece of heat that you get. And all you men be wanting to talk about, oh, people hate me and I'll be getting all this heat. Stop doing the fuck shit. It won't nobody be having to put no heat on that ass. Like y'all continue to do the stuff and they get mad that like y'all are blasted on social media or people got, you know, heat for that ass. And it's like, y'all are doing messed up stuff. You think people are not going to feel some type of way about that and the way that y'all be treating females and the way y'all have kids doing shit like that, bro. So Peter and Shekinah apologize. Um, and here comes in Erica Mena. She kind of like, uh, uh, no, go back. No, mm -mm, your ass is late. You were hour late. And she walks in ironically on Sin's turn to speak as she's, you know, basically apologizes for her, her vibe at the, you know, after she came and talking from Cisco, she was like, you know what? I was just in a bad energy, you know, and I just really brought that in with you guys. And I just want to apologize for that. Um, you know, I just really was in a bad mood, you know? Um, and so she's like, that's it, you know? And Brooke was like, well, damn, I wanted to hear more, but I guess we're not going to hear. Um, and so they kind of wrote on the pieces of paper everything they want to see, you know, for the future. Zell is, he want this, this, this married life and kids. He want it. Um, everybody, you know, peace, prosperity, happiness, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and that's kind of where the episode ended. So you guys loving hip hop? Tell me how you feel. What do you feel about Safari and Erica Mena going forward? You feel like are they on some full gazy shit? Um, and y'all drop it in the comments. Let's keep it pushing. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter, and I will check y'all later. Make sure to go check out my video for Portia Family Matters, y'all. Okay? Go check it out. Show some love. <laughs> Deuces.